Hey, what's going on guys? The Heart Pirates TCG here and I'm finally back bringing you some some match videos with some commentary. I just I didn't want to get the channel. I didn't want the channel to be very stale. So I wanted to take a little bit of a break from the matches, you know, and, and do a couple diverse things. Um, so I'm actually, I'm, I, I love doing this. It's actually one of my favorite things to do, just commentating on matches and seeing who wins and, you know, seeing where the best plays were and, you know, mistakes along the way, because it ha actually helps me learn a lot too. But I'm bringing you Kinemon versus Doflamingo. This is actually round one of the tournament. Um, so it looks like our Doflamingo actually goes second. And he goes ahead and plays an Alvita. For those of you guys who don't know, Alvita, you can discard a card and bounce a three or less uh, back to the opponent's hand, which is a great start because that can bounce the, uh, the uh, what is it, Okiku. It can bounce a Rizo. It can bounce a whole lot of things. You're probably not going to want to bounce the Momo, but she's just there as a threat. However, if he doesn't have the Okiku, which he does not, then it's probably just going to get rested by a Yamato or you know, Straw Sword. I know the player on the left actually does play Straw Sword, so the Alvita is not going to put in the work that he wants it to, but it is a good deterrent, and um, it does it does slow him down a little bit. So he's going to go ahead and swing six at life. Our Doflamingo player is going to take it. Um, the, guy, the guy that's playing Doflamingo is, like, completely Doflamingoed out. He, um, I mean, he, he literally had, like, the, he had the, the pants, the shirt, he had his hair kind of looked like Doflamingo. He said he cosplays as Doflamingo too, so um, I thought it was pretty funny. I was like, bro, you look just like Doflamingo. Um, hey, real quick, I want to shout out my Patreon people, guys. Thanks so much for supporting me uh, through this journey, and I appreciate you guys a lot. If you guys haven't joined our Discord, you totally should. We have a tournament coming up on the 3rd. Um, top 4 is going to split um, either PayPal or Cash App. So uh, signing up is on the Discord. The link's going to be in the description below. So it looks like our Doflamingo player uses 3 Dawn to play Doflamingo, who is a blocker, and also rearranges the top 5 cards of his deck. And he's has, looks like, how much Dawn does he have left? Probably 1, so he can't, can't use his effect yet. So he's going to swing 5 at Momo. Momo is going down. Sorry, Momo. And then it looks like he's going to pass. Then player on the left is going to be at 5 Dawn now. And he drew into a Punk Gibson. I actually like this this view, this angle a lot better because you can see their cards a lot of the time too. So you can see like what's in their hand, and uh, not so much the player on the left or on the right. It's a little a little out of the scope. Well, you can see a little bit. So it looks like he's got Double Killer, Toki, Punk Gibson, Izo, Paradise Waterfall. Not really doing a whole lot. He's gonna swing <laughs> eight at life. And let's see if our Doflamingo player wants to take it. I probably would block this just because if he has three, I don't know, maybe. Because if he's saving two, yeah, then if he's saving two, I block it. Nice, good call, good call. That way you don't get punished by the Punk Gibson. That's a good call right there. Smart player. Smart player, boys. All right, so in the in this match, actually, um, our uh, Kid One player told me after, he was like, the first card I even played was that Odin. <laughs> because like he just had nothing in hand. He had like double killer. He had, you know, Odin. But like, you don't really want to play the Odin. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or you don't want to just play the killer for nothing, especially because the Alvita is just going to bounce it back. However, I do think maybe play it. Um, it just depends on how he wants to, how he wants to do it. If he wants to save the killer for possibly like the eight drop kid that he's playing, maybe that's what he's what he's doing, or you know just general counter power. But it doesn't seem bad to, to save them in hand. Sometimes you just want to save them for the the right situation. So he's going to go ahead uh, and attack. At life, he's going to play Akuma off the top of his deck. He's going to Punk Gibson, the Alvita. And then Doflamingo is actually going to come out. Blocker Doflamingo. He's going to rearrange the top five cards of his deck. See a Mihawk in there. See a Gecko Maria in there. Looks like the Gecko is what he's really going to do. Gecko can get back Doflamingo and just have constant cycles. So let's see if that's what he decides to do there. Hopefully he doesn't whiff. Uh, then he's just going to pass his turn. And I'm pretty sure if uh, what my friend Alessandro told me on the uh, left is correct, then he's just going to play Odin as the first card. So he's going to swing five at something, more than likely Alvita. Just for good math. Quick math. Yep. Alvita is going down. More than likely. He debates it for a second. At this point, I mean, Okiku, maybe you, maybe you save it. Yeah, yeah, he does save it. And then he actually counters out with the Doflamingo. That's actually, that is something I didn't expect. Um, but it could have actually been really good. 
because now he has the two blockers for the Odin coming up and he has the Alvita just in case the Okiku comes out. The problem is, once Odin's out, if you don't find the Mihawk at least like the, the next turn or the turn before that, then it's not looking great because Odin just applies a lot of pressure. Uh, he picks up a lot of Dawn to bait the, uh, to scare him into the Mihawk. However, the Mihawk is just a body. Like, the Mihawk is not going to bottom deck anything. It's just a body, even if he plays it. He has the Doflamingo, the uh, seven cost Doflamingo. But nothing he can really bounce here. So he's going to swing seven at life, and then he's going to activate his effect. He's going to play a Gekka Maria off the top of his deck. He's going to go ahead and take that. And looks like he lifes into a Yamato. So he's got double Paradise Waterfall, double Killer. He, he's got Yamato in hand. So he's got he's got a couple things that he can he can play here for sure. And he has five or six Dawn left. He's gonna use looks like five of it possibly. I don't know why the camera just moved there a little bit. That was kind of odd. That was a, a bit odd, isn't it? A bit odd. I think someone like messed with it a little bit. Uh, looks like he's gonna play. He's gonna hard play Gecko Maria to get back. Looks like blocker Doflamingo, and he's gonna swing five at his life with Kuma. Is he gonna counter out of that one? Probably use the killer. Yep, counter out with killer, and he's gonna more than likely pass with one dot up. He doesn't play the Spada though, so why did he? Maybe he's baiting the Spada. Why did he pass with the one dot up? A bit odd. A bit odd, isn't it? What do you guys think? Is it better here to bait the Spada? I mean, it's not like it's not like like you're really gonna play around it, you know? You can't really play around. It's like oh, it's a 2K counter. <laughs> like you're not like it's like oh man, I don't want him to use the Spada. So yeah, I don't know about I don't know without extra Dawn leaving it up. I mean, we've all done that. We've all done that. We play our turns differently depending on what they do, and then we just end up with one Dawn up. It happens. Maybe that's what, maybe, maybe Alessandro on the left did something he didn't expect. It looks like he draws into an X-Drake. Now, X-Drake is really good into the, extra X-Drake is great into the Doflamingo matchup because it can just kill any card they bring off the top. And it's a, and it establishes a, a six cost body or 6,000 body. So if I were him, I'd probably just kill the Gecko Maria. He's going to swing five at the Kuma. Kuma is going to go down. Does he have the Pacifista in hand? He does. The old switcheroo. The one for one. So, he still has all of his Dawn up. Looks like he has either 9 or 10. And he's going to swing 8 at something. Possibly life? Who knows? You know what's funny is, like, this board, the board state looks, like, very heavily Doflamingo-sided. But... A Kenmon player has a great chance just because he has Odin on the field. Now, if our Doflamingo player wants to swing wide, that'd probably be what he should do. I would honestly take that first one. I would take that first one just to save the blocker. So take this one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go, there you go. Uh, or just to save the blocker and make him do that. However, the tides have turned a little bit. He gets two cards off the field, does the damage, plays the X Drake and a Toki, and passes. So it's looking, looking a little dicey here right now for our Doflamingo player, just because, like, it, once once their pressure get, once their kill pressure kind of evaporates, it makes it very tough to come back because you're swinging with like medium, like you know, medium guys, mid characters, right? You got like five Ks, you got six Ks, and yeah, you can distribute your Dawn to make them a little bit. Uh, more more powerful, but you know they're just gonna die. So it looks like he's gonna play the Doflingo and bounce back at the Toki, and uh, that's not really the what you want to. I mean, you don't want to really bounce back the X Drake either, just because like it's gonna kill another one of your characters. But God, that that feels so bad. Like saving that Doflingo just to bounce back the Toki is is very rough there's not a whole so i, I don't think the seven cost doflamingo is that good right now because there's just not a lot of cards you want to bounce back you know like if you bounce back a black card it's just gonna it's gonna kill something if you bounce back a green card it's gonna rest something or kill something if you bounce back you know uh what is it a red card it most likely has rush or it's like a one cost so it's just the only thing it can really bounce back is like fatch <laughs> or like 
uh, Ben Beckman or something like that. That's like the only thing that actually like matters. Um, the only thing that matters to bounce back, and that's if they're playing a random Luffy deck. You know, you don't really play a lot of Luffy's in tournaments. Looks like he's going to swing 7 at life here. He does have a lot of counters in hand. He has the double waterfall. He's got a couple 1Ks. I don't know if he takes that or not. He plays Blocker Law. And he saves one Dawn up again for something. What is he saving that Dawn for? I'm pretty sure he told me, because I played him, um, I think, the, the round after that. And uh, he told me he didn't play Spada. So he's gonna, is he gonna swing just five? What is he baiting, the, what is he using that one Dawn for, guys? If you have any idea, let me know. He's got the Ezo in hand, he's gonna counter out of that one. And looks like he's just gonna pass with the one Dawn up. And back to 10 Dawn, he draws a seven drop kid. That's exactly what you wanna see. However, if he has that Mihawk, it's still a little scary. But if you if you the thing is though like even if he plays the Mihawk you still have another you have like a turn to run ramp it with four attacks you know with double Odin uh, X Drake and uh, your leader so if he plays Odin swings restands himself like he can still do a whole lot of stuff man he can still do a whole lot of stuff. Now, what is he going to do here? Is he going to establish the kid? The kid the kid is not that great into into the blue mirror or into the blue matchup just because they have the Dofi and they have the Mihawks. But he already played the Dofi and they're usually not playing a ton of them. He's going to swing five at the Gecko Maria. Do you counter out of that one with the Dofi? You do. Then he's going to swing six at the Gecko Maria. He has three cards in hand. He counters out of that one with X Drake. And he's going to swing 8 at the Gekka Maria. That one's probably going to go down. Nope. Blocker Law is going to save that one. He's going to restand him. Swing 8 at the Gekka Maria. Gekka Maria is going down, man. Why not swing 8 at the Pacifista? So it makes me a little... I'm questioning it just a little bit. Then he's going to play Killer. Then he's going to play Okiku. And uh, then he saves one Don up for a Paradise Waterfall. It looks like he's going to pass. Now... This Alvita has stayed on the field for a very, 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 very long time. And that Alvita might actually be able to put in some work today, boys. He might be able to put in some work today. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see. So obviously I think you have to I think you have to Don two. I think you have to you have to attach two Don to the Alvita to make that happen. Or it could be Don it could be one Don. I'm not sure. Exactly. So it looks like he's gonna uh, hard play. The Gekka Maria for four Dawn. Then he's going to get back the Doflamingo. Blocker Doflamingo. And he has seven Dawn at his disposal. What is he going to do? Is he going to play the Doflamingo here to set his stack up? That sounds good. However, you still need to put Dawn on that Alvita for it to actually work. Unless I'm, unless I'm tripping, guys pretty sure you have to attach Dawn to Alvita to get its effect. You can't just discard one. Although that would be pretty good. So off the top, looks like you see a blocker law there. You see another Doflamingo. It looks like a seven cost Doflamingo. So that could be really useful because he has a seven drop kid in hand. Um, what else could he do with that? Looks up. Yep, he's going to put one Dawn on Alvita. <laughs> two Dawn on Alvita? Maybe, maybe it is two Dawn, guys. Maybe it is two Dawn. Is it three Dawn? <laughs> right, looks like he's putting three on Alvita. Probably going to swing at the extra egg here, bouncing back the Okiku. He does have to discard a card, though, and he doesn't have a lot of cards in hand, so that's very unfortunate. So he's going to swing six at the uh, extra egg. Discarding the Doflamingo, bouncing back the Okiku more than likely. Yeah. I think my immune system's failing me, guys. So he plays Paradise Waterfall and actually restands the Odin, which is a big misplay because he has no Dawn up. He should have restood the X Trake. Oh my goodness. Six at the extra. 
Does he take him down? Not entirely sure here. Now he has a couple killers in hand. He has like no counters in hand actually. Maybe he doesn't. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. So he uses the killer's effect. Block draws one into a Capone. <laughs> Another non counter I don't think he has a single counter in hand. And he's going to swing more than likely seven at the X-Trick. Now, here's actually where I disagree. So, killing the X-Trick, yeah, that's that's totally fine. But to be honest, I think it's actually a little bit better to go for life here, go for lethal. Because, obviously, he's not countering out of, like, anything. <sighs> he's not counting out of anything. And I don't see how much life he has, but I think he's taken at least three here. He's taken at least three, I'm pretty sure. So, if he goes for life here... Um... He just, he just played that. This turn, he can't attack with it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so actually, um, you can't really beat Odin or Kinnam on late game. So it's much better to just go for life as Doflamingo and pressure them until they have to play on the defensive. And then that's when you can swing your sevens and get free bodies on the field. And they can't even attack your, attack your life because you have lethal. So that's probably the best way to play Doflamingo. Bro, why does this always happen when I'm making videos? Every time I'm doing commentary, it's like, I get sick again. Okay. So he has 10 down up. He has a couple blockers. Alright, guys. Alright, guys. He has a couple blockers. He has Paradise Waterfall, in which he has not played. Or he has one left. He's going to play the Yamato. Rest the Doflamingo. Swing 5 at Alvita. Alvita goes down. <laughs> okay. More than likely going to save 3 Dawn up for the Odin. Which means he only has, let's see... Three down for Odin, three for Yamato. That means he has four left. He's gonna swing ten at the uh, Pacifista. And he's gonna swing ten at the Doflamingo. He's gonna play one for Beige. And I think he saves one for the Paradise Waterfall. And he's gonna pass. So, commanding position now for our our, uh, what's it called player? Our Doflamingo player. At this point, you don't have a lot of options left. I would try to at least pressure life a ton. Swing with your blocker if you have to. Swing, like, swing all three. And then also, um, swing all three. And then play your boa. Because he has a boa in hand. Or, yeah, that's, that's also good too. Play the Doflamingo. Uh, what is he going to get off the top? There's a Love Love Mellow, a Blocker Law, and a, a seven or a three cost Doflamingo. Totally fine. I like that a lot. So swing seven. So I would swing seven, 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 and then just use some for that or save some for either the Boa or the uh, or the Love Love Mellow. But a minimum, a minimum seven. So he's going to swing seven. He's going to off the top. So, uh, real quick, guys, uh, Doflamingo's effect actually activates first. So, um, so actually, like, before the blocker phase even happens, Doflamingo has to activate his effect. So, um, just for future reference, I want to let you guys know that. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know, but for those of you guys who are just new to the game and haven't really played OPO1, and Doflamingo is like a new kind of thing that has arrived, um, yeah, Doflamingo's effect activates first. And for those of you guys who don't know, that one cost Doflamingo that he plays, he rearranges the top three cards of your deck. And then also, Dawn 1, um, uh, upon attacking, you can actually bottom deck a uh, one cost or lower, or a one, one cost or less. So next turn, if he plays a Beige or a Toki, then that card actually can come in handy a lot. So, 
Seven. You have to go seven here, buddy. He goes five, which is not great. It's not great. I would go seven. He goes five. He's going to just probably just use the Paradise Waterfall for nothing and re- I mean, I guess re- <gasps> Restand his Odin. But he's got a Toki, a Rizo, and then like a bunch of dead cards in hand. So you force him to go seven here. I would have probably gone like seven, seven, nine or something like that. And then save, save two for the, uh, for the waterfall. So he looks like he discards the Rizo to get out of the 5k attack. And I think he's going to save six Don, which is what I think he's doing. Yep. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, play the boa. And then save two, or actually he's not going to save any for the level of melon. He has one left. He's still using, guys, what is that one for? I'm trying to think of one, like, one cost events in blue other than Spada. It's a big, it's a, it's a big mistake because, like, you could do, you could have done damage. So, like, saving that Dawn multiple turns for, for no reason, you could have done a lot of damage. Um... Where, where, like you you don't know this obviously but you could have you could he would he would have probably been at like either one or zero life because he didn't he didn't have any 2ks in hand he just, he just had a bunch of dead cards so he's gonna swing uh six at the rested doflamingo rested doflamingo goes down then he's gonna read the doflamingo and he's like i don't like that at all that's kind of good so his toki his Toki is doomed if he plays it. All right, there's there's no doubt about that. So he's going to swing seven at the Gecko Maria with the Yamato. More than likely going to go down. I don't think he has any cards in hand. I would save it. No, don't do it. Yet yeah, let it go die. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Don't save. Don't save it. There you go. Because at least he'll have to attack life and then you'll have cards in hand. You'll have a lot of cards in hand, and you'll be able to pressure life. So, swing nine at life. Take both these, buddy. Yes, sir. Nice. And he's going to restand the Odin. Swing nine at life again. You have to let this slide, my friend. You have to. Come on. Take the life. Take the life, my friend. This is actually his first tournament, guys. Uh, this is round one. Um, but I think he, 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 played, he said he played a lot on the Sim. Um, but I think he's played pretty well thus far. Um, he's, you know, not gotten punished by Punk Gibsons and random things. However, I don't think you should block this, buddy. I think you should take this life. I think you should take this life. He does not take this life. So he's going to play Okiku and pass. So the thing is, if he took that life... So guys, think of it like this. If he takes that life, I think, uh, I think Alessandro here on the left is actually at... Uh, I believe he's at three or two, either one or two life when when this all occurred. If he didn't do that, he can swing seven, seven, or he, he can probably swing eight, eight, nine, and kill him, right? Because he only has like a couple cards in hand, and he has three k worth of counter, as you guys can see. I think that I think that's actually enough to kill him. He's gonna swing seven at life, more than likely here. And he's going to bring out a Gekka Maria. Uh, Gekka Maria brings back something. I forgot what. Then he's going to Paradise Waterfall, play the Toki, uh, and discard Toki to save the Yamato. And then he's going to... Is he going to play the... Oh, this is tough, man. Now you have to go for life here. You have to go for life here. And he's going to play the Doflamingo. I just don't I don't think it's enough guys. I don't think it's enough.
I didn't realize how long this video was, so I'm going to actually, the next couple tournaments are going to be, um, the, the next couple videos are going to be definitely sped up a little bit. I forgot this was like a very long match, so I'll speed it up to like 1 point, like 3 or 1.4 uh, times, that way I can, you know, save you guys from this very, very, very long video. I know attention spans are very short these days, so um, the algorithm will not do me justice if... Uh, you guys are turning it off five minutes into the video. We can't have five minute videos though, guys. It's just it's just not possible. It's not possible. This isn't TikTok, my friends. Um, so he's gonna what is he gonna do here? I think he just he just passes here. It's very unfortunate because he's just playing on the defensive. He's playing on the defensive now, and that's when Doflamingo starts to lose when they're playing on the defensive. Like whenever they're aggressive, Doflamingo just always has like they just feel like they they feel suffocating, you know, like they swing seven. They get a card. They swing. You know, they they get a card back from their from their trash. Like, it just feels like they always have plays. But when they start playing like this, it just feels like it's just not enough. It just feels like it's not enough. So, uh, it looks like he has he has two blockers, but one of them is gone with this Okiku. More than likely the Boa. However, he has an Izo in hand, so is he going to play the Izo and then rest the other two blockers and then swing game? I think that's the play, guys. He only has, like, two cards in hand, so I don't. I just don't think it's going to be enough. I don't think it's going to be enough. Now, the, the question here is, do I risk it, right? So if he has two cards in hand, he's, he's, he's representing a... Uh, he's representing a Love Love Mellow, right? So Okiku would rest one or if he does if he does use the the two cards right so he'll he'll use four dawn essentially for the uh izo and then the okiku which means he'll have six dawn left and three to restand the odin which means he only has three to replay to uh to play with which means he has to swing six five or seven ten five seven ten ten or eleven eleven or something something like that now, if does that math actually work? Because he technically only has to get out of two of these attacks, and he possibly he could possibly get out of both the the Odin or both the uh, Yamato and the um, and the Kinemon. So it's not it's not a hundred percent over, guys. It really isn't a hundred percent over at all. He can love, love, mellow the, the uh, Yamato and then 2k Catter out of the uh, Okiku. More than likely. What is he going to do here? He's debating swinging with the Kinemon first. You have to you have to swing with that 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 uh, Okiku first. You have to. At least. Or play the Izo. He's debating for a while. I think he's going to end up playing the Izo here. Because I don't think he can actually survive another turn. I think I think he's dead. More than likely. I'm not sure how much life he has left because his is a little off the screen. But it looks like, uh, looks like he's just going to go for it here. He, I, I, that's the only other thing he can think of. I should definitely speed this up next time. Sorry, guys. He's He's like really stressing about this. He's... He's really stressing about this. He did finish top four in this tournament, so I think he played. I think he did the right thing. He played pretty well. He's been playing really well recently. Uh, top eight at the uh, case tournament we had a couple weeks ago too. Plays the Izo, rests the four or less, which is the Boa. Then he's gonna go ahead and play the. Yam he's gonna put more than likely two on Yamato, or on uh, Okiku. No, swing seven, force him to do that. He's like trying to figure out all the math. He's gonna put one on Okiku. Swing, resting the uh, Doflamingo. Does he have a 2k counter here? Does he? Does he, guys? If he has a 2k counter, I think he can win this. He does not have the 2k counter. And he draws into the Mihawk. <laughs> yeah, he lifes into the Mihawk. That is unfortunate, guys. And then he's going to probably put... Is he going to put... No, swing 5 here, 7 with Yamato. So he's going to swing 6 at life. I think he's just gonna play. He's. I think he has to play the level of mellow here. Unless he counter. He, does he have? Uh, no, he doesn't. Because he has a Kuma in hand and then a level of mellow. Guys, uh, this game looks like it's gonna be over. So if you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe and you know like the video to boost the algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. 
Um, join the Discord if you haven't already. And uh, I would love to see you guys on the next one. I'll be posting another one tomorrow. This one's going to come out a little later today. So my friends in California, I apologize for the uh, <laughs> for the late video, but hopefully you enjoy it. Take it easy, guys. Peace.